All right, I want to get right back to continue with this derivation. And this is where we left off in the last video that P was equal to the covariance between I minus KC times XT minus X bar T plus the covariance between K and VT. So I just underline this because here we're going to talk about an important property of covariance matrices similar to how we talked about the property that we can split apart covariance matrices similar to how we can split apart integrals. Well, the covariance between A or the covariance of A times B if A has no bearing on B, meaning it's just, you know, constant multiplication, we can actually write this as A times the covariance of B times A transpose. And I'm not going to prove this in this video. We're already doing enough proofs as it is. This is a, a property of, of covariance matrices, which maybe I'll prove in a separate video, but you can look this up online and you'll, you'll find this property. Now, in this equation that we have up here, we see that here we can model this as A, right? This is A and, and, and this is B right here. Why? Because this A is not, it's not anything in terms of X. And in fact, anything that we, when we multiply this A times B, we're not going to change X drastically. We're not going to multiply X times another X, right? So this is safely, we can call this A and same in this covariance matrix. If we can call this K to call it A and this V of T to call it B, we see that the same thing holds. So we're actually just going to rewrite P as right here, A, which turns out to be I minus KC times the covariance of xt minus x bar t times a transpose, which in this case is i minus kc transpose. And then we're going to add this second covariance, which is going to be k times the covariance of vt times k transpose. Now, this may look like we actually just complicated things a lot more, but there are a couple of substitutions we can do here. The first substitution that we see is this one right here, covariance of vt. If you look at the common filter algorithm, you'll realize that there's this matrix called R, which is defined to be the covariance matrix of the sensor noise. So I'll just call this noise. Well, I'll call it sensor noise to be perfectly accurate. We define it to be the covariance of the sensor noise. Well, this VT, we define to be the sensor noise. So when we're doing the covariance of the sensor noise, we can actually just plug in R, right? This is the same as R. So from now on, we're going to refer to this as R, all right? And we see this right here, covariance of XT minus X bar T. Well, we defined P this whole time to be the covariance between XT minus x hat t. But remember that I told you there was also a p bar, which we we're going to explain at the end. p bar essentially is the covariance of xt minus x bar t, as opposed to x hat t, it's, 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 it's x bar t. So this right here, we actually can write it as p bar of t if you want to write a t, but that's not really necessary. We're just saying that p bar, oh yeah, I guess you get expression in terms of t. p bar of t is the same as this. So now we're going to rewrite this expression p as I minus KC times P bar of T times I minus KC transpose plus K R K transpose. All right. So we, we've kind of simplified things a little bit, but we're not done yet because we're actually trying to solve these things in terms of K. So we're going to expand this matrix or this multiplication out a little bit more. And then, you know, from here on, it's just kind of plug and chug and, and expanding things out. But let's go ahead and, and keep working on this. We see that P, if we expand this, I minus KC onto um, P bar of T, we get the, the identity matrix times P bar of T, which we already know is P bar of T minus KC P bar of T, right? We're just multiplying things. And then we're going to multiply this thing times I minus KC transpose. Well, I minus KC transpose, the identity matrix is symmetric, meaning, well, the identity matrix, it's transpose is the identity matrix itself. So we can actually express this as just I, right? Because I transpose is I minus K transpose C transpose. And this multiplication we, we can do. And then here we're just going to keep on this plus K A R K transpose, right? Nothing, nothing new yet. So let me just scroll down to get a little more space here. So let's go ahead and, and, and finish up this multiplication. We get that P is equal to, all right, let's go P bar T times I, you know, same old story, P bar T minus K transpose C transpose times P bar T. So minus K transpose, C transpose, P bar T minus this times the identity matrix. I don't know that's the same old story. So minus KC, P bar T. And then we get a negative times a negative. So this, this becomes interesting. Now we get a positive. So we'll multi multiply K, C, K transpose, C transpose, P bar T. Wow, that was a mouthful. And now we're also going to add this final term over here, which we didn't, we didn't consider. K, R, K transpose. Wow, so this is actually a lot of stuff. So how, how can we group things together this time? Remember how in previous videos, 
we started to group together certain things. Well, in this case, we can also start grouping together certain other uh, values for this covariance matrix P and this expanded form of the covariance matrix P. So how, how can we do this? How can we start expanding things? Well, again, notice how like in the last video, we see a lot of things in terms of P bar of T and we see it repeated in, in terms of K transpose, C transpose, K and C. So, all right, let's go ahead and work with this. One more substitution we can do actually before we begin. Well, I'll do that substitution at the end. Let's go ahead and, and, and keep writing this. I'll do it in, in a different color to differentiate this. Here we get P bar of T. And here, again, there's nothing we can do. And instead, here we get K transpose, C transpose, P bar of T, and minus K, C, P bar of T. But there are some things we could do for this, right? Instead of, of you know taking all these things, we can add a K and multiply this by C P bar uh, C transpose, right? And to this, we're going to add R. And then to this entire expression, entire expression, we're going to multiply it by K transpose. And now, why, why does this work? Because here we'll get uh, K C P bar uh, C transpose times K, which is, you know, and then at the end times K transpose. So we'll get P K C K transpose P bar C transpose, which is exactly this expression over here. And over here, we'll get K R K transpose. So this is, you know, this is exactly the same. Now there's one other variable within this, this common filter algorithm. And that's this thing right here. This thing right here is defined to be S. This is S. Okay. And don't call me why, you know, don't tell me why or ask me why it's called S. It's just, it's called S. And I guess it's just to simplify. So we don't have to keep writing that all the time. But if now we continue, we get that this is equal to P bar of T minus K transpose C transpose P bar T minus K C P bar T plus K S K transpose. Okay. So now comes the fun part. We actually now, since we've kind of broken this down and, you know, split it into several pieces and chunks. Now we want to take the derivative of the trace of this thing. And it's actually more like a gradient because this is a matrix. So we want to take the gradient of the trace of this, which again, we're trying to minimize the trace with respect to this call in matrix K. And I'll go through how we got this equation in, in a little later, but just know that now here, we're trying to take these partial derivatives and now we're that the trace of P, right? With respect to this common gain K is going to give us negative two times C P bar of T transpose plus two K S. All right. And I'll explain how we get that in, in a little bit. And I'll, I'll, I'll just want to solve for the matrix K and I'll explain how we got this, this gradient. But if now we try to solve for this matrix K, right, we have to set the derivatives to zero so we can start minimizing things. So we get that zero and then we're going to bring over this two K S. So we get that negative two K S equals negative two C P bar transpose or P bar T transpose. All right. And if we actually do this, uh, this whole transpose thing, we'll realize that this is just the same as negative two C transpose P bar T transpose. But since P bar of T is a covariance matrix, it's symmetric. So it's its own transpose. So as a matter of fact, this is just equal to negative two uh, C transpose P bar of T. So negative two KS is equal to this. We'll cancel out the negative two and we'll get that KS equals C transpose P bar T, P bar T. And now we, instead of dividing by S like you would in normal, we have to take S inverse. So at the end, what we get is that K, the common gain K, and I'll, I'll just extend this up here. The common gain K is equal to P bar of T times C transpose times S inverse. Wow. Finally, we finally solved it. We finally solved what our common gain K is. And that's incredible. We're going to use that now to finally solve the rest of these algorithms. And we'll also take a look at how we got this gradient. I'm just almost out of time. So I, I wanted to split the, the gradient derivation into a separate video so we can at least just get the common gain K and hopefully this intuition. So even if you don't know how to derive this, this gradient, just think of this. This is the derivative, right? Or the gradient really. So we're trying to set it to zero. Zero will minimize it. And we finally solved that K with this, we'll set the gradient to zero. Now we're able to optimally find this value of K and, and what a mission that was. Congratulations if you made it this far.